Sustainability is hip happening and trending and a lot of people are getting on board, which is great. 75% of people say that they are trying to make more sustainable choices, yet only 9% of plastics are still getting recycled. And when you're trying to live sustainably, seeing stats like that, it kind of just feels like you are one tiny reusable straw in a literal sea of plastic waste. Well, given all that, it's no surprise that many of us feel like this. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. I'm Amber here from Sustainable Jungle, where we share sustainability tips, tricks, hacks, products, brands, and stories to better our planet. But you know what? On some days it gets a little overwhelming, even for us. Yeah, eco burnout is real. I'm talking about the sheer and utter overwhelm of trying to do it all sustainably and feeling guilty when you can't, because obviously you can't. And this is all the while the world still feels like it's spinning full speed toward destruction. So let's talk about what eco burnout is, why it happens, and most importantly, what we can do about it. First, if you haven't already, please take a second to like this video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and hit that notification bell so you can stay in the loop whenever we publish something new. And we promise we do try to keep things empowering and upbeat here. We're all human after all. So let's talk about the eco burnout problem and where it comes from. Well, reason number one is simply the pressure. Pushing down on me, pushing down on... No, just, just me? Well, well, queen aside, <laughs> I'm talking about the pressure to be perfect, especially in the modern age where so much of our lives are broadcast on social media for everyone and their mother to see. It's like if you make one mistake, like forgetting your reusable coffee cup, and suddenly, bam, you are public enemy number one. We all know that we live in an era of cancel culture where it's easy to take out your frustrations in life by writing a few mean anonymous comments on the internet. In Europe, for example, uh, a movement called flight shame is taking off, where people are actively telling others that they simply shouldn't fly. Ever. And do airlines and travel obviously have a huge environmental impact? Yeah, of course they do. Does that mean that we should lock ourselves in our houses and never venture outside to see the world that we're trying to save? Absolutely not. The reality is, is that none of us are perfect. And here at SJ, we've never been on board with the whole eco guilt shtick. Our motto is progress over perfection, because there's no such thing as perfect sustainable living. Now say that with me no such thing as perfect sustainable living. It's all about being better, not being the best. And we try to remind people of that as often as possible because we think it's really important to stay motivated and not let people get down on themselves. But at the same time, we get the desire to be perfect. And sometimes if you're a chronic perfectionist like me, you'll know that a lot of times we put the most pressure on ourselves to get it right. And this is called eco-perfectionism, where we feel like we have to do everything perfectly or it doesn't count. Spoiler alert, it counts. The next big driver behind eco burnout is that there is a lack of immediate tangible results when you're trying to live sustainably. Now, we all want to feel like our efforts are paying off. We want to see progress. That's just human nature. But when it comes to really large scope things like sustainability, there simply isn't a way to provide those tangible results that make us feel like we're making a difference. I mean, I've been using metal straws for three years. I don't think I've used a plastic straw in that entire time. And the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is still bigger than Texas. Um, excuse me, where is my impact? <laughs> and sure, switching to say a reusable water bottle will save the average person 156 plastic bottles annually, and yet Americans alone still buy 50 billion of them, recycling less than 10% of those. And that number is growing. Despite all the talk of sustainable living, all these people that say they're trying to live more sustainably, these numbers are still growing. Researchers analyzed data from 109 countries and found that the waddled water industry saw a 73% growth in sales from 2010 to 2020, making it one of the fastest growing industries in the world. So given all this, a lot of people say, what's the point? Because yeah, it's hard not to feel like your efforts are a drop in the rising plastic filled ocean. And the final big contributing reason to eco burnout is doom scrolling and media overload. We live in a world that is saturated with information. Some of it useful, a lot of it absolute drivel. There is nothing like opening Instagram to see record breaking heat wave followed by another species just went extinct. And this is all leading to unprecedented levels of climate anxiety, in young people especially. One group surveyed 10,000 people aged 16 to 25 years old in 10 countries, and more than 50% of them reported feeling sad, anxious, angry, powerless, helpless, and even guilty. And over 45% of respondents said their feelings about climate change negatively affected their daily life and functioning. 
These numbers are even higher in some locales like Australia, where one in two young people aged 18 to 24 fear the impact of climate changing in Australia. Another survey among 16 to 25 year olds in the UK showed that nearly 60% of them felt either very or extremely worried about climate change, and more than half of them said that climate change made them feel, quote, afraid, sad, anxious, angry, powerless, helpless, and or guilty. And as a psychology professor at Willamette University, Susan M. Coger says, when we're scared, we can freeze. We all know this, this is a basic fight or flight response, and sometimes the world just seems so grim that we can't find the energy to fight. But. Fear not, because we are not about to end this video on a doom and gloom note. There are ways to fight back against this eco burnout that are simple, practical, and yes, even still fun. First up, focus on progress over perfection. And I really cannot stress this one enough because none of us have any room for eco guilt in our lives especially guilt that you put on yourself. Remember, sustainability isn't about doing everything perfectly, it's about doing what you can. Even small changes add up. You don't need to overhaul your whole life to make a difference. Forget your reusable bags at the grocery store, don't beat yourself up. Take the groceries out to your car directly in your cart if you can, or maybe just try to load up your bags a little bit heavier so you use fewer plastic bags. Either way, forgetting things like that every once in a while are really not the end of the world. So be gentle with yourself. Next. Find what makes you happy about living sustainably. Do you love cooking? Like I do? Maybe focus on food sustainability. Or maybe you're really into fashion, so you can embrace thrifting and choosing eco-friendly brands or even starting your own upcycled fashion. You have to make sustainability work for you so you don't have to feel like it's another chore. For me, I'm super into self-sufficient living, so I have a full-on homestead dream one day, but right now I focus on doing what I can here on my little micro homestead, like growing organic food and preserving as much of it as possible, so I don't have to go to the grocery store to buy unsustainably grown or packaged things. And finding joy in that process is way more motivating than doing it out of guilt. Trust me. Tip number three, be sure that you take some time to reconnect with nature. Not only is being in nature scientifically shown to have major benefits on mental and physical health, but spending time in nature can remind you why you're so committed to sustainability in the first place. Whether it's just a walk in the park by your house or a hike in the mountains, those moments can rejuvenate your passion for protecting the environment. And it'll also help us be grateful for the planet and the resources that it provides, so that's another reason to motivate us to take care of it. Next, set new achievable goals from time to time. Break down your larger sustainability aspirations into smaller, more manageable tasks. For example, if you want to aim to reduce your household waste, be specific about the amount of waste that you wanna reduce or maybe the room that you wanna reduce it in. So instead of looking at, I just wanna reduce waste in my house, say, okay, I want to reduce how often I take out the trash in my kitchen. If you set things within a time frame and make them small and digestible, it's a lot easier to tackle and achieve those goals. And it's also really helpful to keep a log of your habits and your goals that you've set and achieved, such as maybe how much energy you've saved or maybe how much you've composted in a year. Visualizing your progress can reinforce the importance of your actions and help you stay focused and motivated. And get creative with your goals. Don't just hop on board with the whole trash jar thing and call it good at that. Maybe you can try certain challenges that are more limited in time frame, like having a zero waste day instead of having to put all of your trash from a whole year in a jar. Or maybe you should host a swap party with your friends or start growing your own herbs or vegetables. Doing something fun, something unique, something creative can help you enjoy that process a lot more. My next tip for you is to take digital detox days because let's be real, sometimes we just need to unplug. Take breaks from doom scrolling and give yourself permission to tune out because the internet has become an increasingly negative place and we just don't need that in our lives every day, all the time. Social media sabbaticals can do wonders for your mental health and the bad news will still be there when you get back. And then when you are online, seek out positive news, not just the negative sources. And yes, most major news organizations like to keep it negative and drive those clicks. But the good news is out there. I really recommend the book Climate Optimism, Celebrating Systemic Change Around the World by Zara Biabani as a good starting place. This is a really great overview of how systemic changes have occurred around the world to remind us that there are steps forward being made. And on that note, lastly, and this one is super important, celebrate the win no matter how small they are. Did you reuse a jar today? Compost some food scraps? Convince a friend not to make that impulse buy on Shein? That's 
awesome. Because remember, it's more than the vast majority of people are doing. And while you're at it, take a step back and look at the positive changes and progress you've already made over time. Whether it's reducing plastic waste, conserving energy, or eating more sustainably. For me, this one is so helpful because believe it or not, my life was not always nearly as sustainable as it is today. Whenever I feel like I'm down or that I'm not doing enough, I think back to 10 years ago when I didn't even know that the term fast fashion was a thing and I thought stores like Forever 21 were the cat's meow. And don't even get me started on food. I used to buy the cheapest grocery store items available because I was raised in a household that believed organic was just an excuse to charge more money. So see what I mean? We are all making tremendous progress even if we don't always feel like it. By acknowledging the things that you're doing, you'll feel more motivated to keep doing things and keep growing instead of feeling weighed down by what's left to do. And at the end of the day, remember this, you alone are not responsible for saving the planet. And it shouldn't feel like you are. Real change happens when governments and industries and big businesses step up, but your actions still matter to help drive those things. Think of it like voting. Your individual vote might not determine the outcome altogether, but together they can add up to create big change. Buying sustainable products, for instance, when we do need to buy things and thus not buying unsustainable ones, especially when we don't need to buy them, is like telling brands the kinds of things that we want them to offer. If no one is buying cheap plastic products, eventually brands will hopefully stop making them. So let's take a breather, celebrate the wins, and remember, progress, not perfection. Let's all keep doing our best without losing our minds in the process, and let's help each other do just that. So rather than tearing people down when they make a mistake, encourage them to get back on track. Saving the planet starts with positivity. So help me spread some today by dropping your favorite ways to deal with eco burnout in the comments below. What do you find is the most helpful and what is the most harmful when you're struggling? And thanks for watching eco warriors. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe. And once again, I'm Amber from SJ, hoping you all stay fiery in your fight for the planet as as long as we don't let that fire lead to burnout.